Hey everybody, it's John and it is Dry Fire Monday sponsored by the Mantis X Firearms Performance System. I know you're like, dude, it's Dry Fire Monday, but John, it's not Monday when you're posting this video. I ask for your forgiveness. You guys know, you've been watching a little bit. We were in Thailand for two weeks, my wife and I, and then this past weekend I turned right around. We literally got home late Tuesday night. I had one day to wash clothes and to pack to go to Detroit for a Survive the Fight tour in Detroit. So I got a little bit behind. I got home late, late on Sunday night. And because of that, we are delayed a little bit this week in getting our Dry Fire Monday video out until later in the week. So I apologize for that, but it does actually bring me to this week's topic. So I haven't handled a gun for a couple weeks. Yes, actually I did go and fire a few live fire shots in Detroit, um, but I did this routine when I got home from two weeks in Thailand to refresh me with my firearm. And so I thought it would be a good topic as well that if you haven't touched your gun for a couple weeks, for whatever reason, you were out of the country or you visited a state where your CCW isn't there, or frankly, you just got lazy and you need to refresh your skills, how do you do it? Well, let's talk about using the Mantis and using dry fire in general to refresh our firearm skills after a break. The Mantis X Firearms Training System is used by everyone from defensive shooters to competitive shooters to even U.S. military special forces. You can train like each one of those groups and get better between range trips. So first of all, like I've always said, you don't have to have a Mantis uh, Firearms Training System in order to refresh your skills, okay? You can do all this just watching your front side, just watching your red dot, whatever. You can do all that, but I think this adds a level of feedback that I find very helpful myself, and I think the vast majority of shooters do as well. So, we're gonna do a few things here that will help us to kinda just knock the rust off. We haven't seen some things in a little while, or we haven't been able to get after it and um, you know train like we would really like to. And, and so now we're gonna just refresh some skills, and we start with the unit on the rail and with a benchmark. I really like this 10 round benchmark that I get in my Mantis X because it gives me a, a snapshot of how my grip and trigger control are doing. This first one's very simple. So if I don't have a Mantis X, I just am going to get my full grip on the firearm, get all the grip I'm gonna get, drive it out, get a good sight picture, get good sight alignment, everything that I need to do, and very firmly press the trigger to the rear and maintain a good sight picture, maintain good sight alignment, maintain a still front sight. You know, you can do the old penny on the front sight trick if that's what you're doing. I'm trying to keep myself upright, get good press straight to the rear, and when it breaks, I still have my sight where it belongs, get another sight picture. And I do that 10 shots to just break the ice. So a little earlier, I did a 10 shot group. There's my score, scored a little over a 95, which is a fantastic group, it means I still got it. The next thing that I like to do is I like to do a little bit of a compressed break. So that means I maybe have the gun up and on target, finger on the trigger, ready to go, but I'm not quite shooting just yet, though I am ready to, everything is prepared to, and when I get that beep, boom, I go. Now, I can use a time for that and I use this pocket pro 2 I've had it for quite some time works really well um, I will do this with a second beep whatever as well we'll talk about that in a minute or I can use my mantis X and use the compressed surprise break feature and all I'm doing with that I have this set for two beeps right now so deal with me is that I'm going to drive the gun out get a good side picture get my finger on the trigger ready to go and try to keep as still a front sight as I possibly can when the beep goes off to get the shot that I want. Again, this is set for two beeps right now, but I ignore the second. So there we go, we've got that, feel good. So you see, there was a second beep as well, but as soon as I heard that first beep, I went and I go as, as fast as I can while maintaining the sight still. Okay, little bit of sight jump on that one for me. So what that's doing is it is reminding me that maybe I've got somebody out there at gunpoint that I've got that, but I still have to break through that wall and maintain my side picture and my side alignment. Do that five times and get a little bit of reminder of pushing that trigger a little bit faster. I did it on my Mantis X just a little bit ago. You can see my scores went down just a little bit from my um, benchmark because I don't have all day to pull the trigger. I have to press that trigger straight to the rear with speed. And I was averaging after the first shot, my first shot was like 0.45 seconds. After that, I was right around a quarter second, which I'm pretty happy with. Okay, third, we're gonna work on some draws from concealment because I carry this as a concealed cover gun every single day. So, uh, you know, a concealed carry gun, right? 
right? So again, we verify that this gun is empty. We have to have an empty gun. You notice I've taken the Mantis X off the rail because I don't have a holster that will accommodate it. So this one here, we can do a couple of ways. If, we're, if we have a gun that has a, a magazine plate adapter, you can use that magazine plate adapter and use your Mantis X as a timer as well. I'm gonna put this guy away. Appendix, I'm gonna use my timer here. Now, I'm gonna do that in a little bit, but first I'm going to just get a few draws that are nice and smooth and ready, that I'm doing everything right. And then I will come back for the last couple of draws and really kind of let it go and go with some speed. So you guys know we can do it one of a couple of ways, right? So if I back up so you can see me a little bit better in the screen, I can go hands up here, I can do the, you know, hands up on my hat or over my ears or whatever, or I can do hands down, no problem. I just don't like the tactical turtle, right? What I really don't want is the tactical turtle. I'm kind of, I really do like this, and it's kind of funny because uh, Scott Jedlinski has really encouraged me to do something that will give a little bit of speed advantage to my support hands so that I can uh, get both hands moving at the same time and growing. So again, from this kind of a position, hey man, I don't want any problems, leave me alone, bro, just kind of back off, whatever. I'm gonna go get the cover garment, get to the gun, drive the gun out, get a good shot, see my sights and do what I need to do, and reset. Now you notice, I didn't go fast, I went smooth for everything. I want to have smooth, not because slow is smooth and smooth is fast, slow is slow, fast is fast, but because slow keeps me from doing you know, an unnecessary frenetic motions. Once again, thank you, Jedi, uh, Scott Jedlinski, for that terminology and for that reminder. So again, whatever, whether I'm from here or whatever, I go get my gun, cover garment, gun out, go. Good, saw my sights, see everything, get everything that you want. Ready, we get everything and we go. And what my goal is here is no unnecessary motion. Nothing wasted, nothing that is keeping me from going at the fastest speed that I can. So again, I'm not gonna get a bunch of herky-jerky motion, I'm gonna just get the gun out and drive it and get a good grip and do my thing, reset. Now, I'm just gonna tell you, set your timer, if you're gonna do it on the timer, at whatever speed is right for you, right? We say that the national standard of concealed carry is two seconds. So I'm gonna actually adjust this right now. We're gonna put that on there because I, I was working earlier today um, at my normal speed and we'll get back there in just a second. But I'm gonna set the part timer at two seconds again, right? So it's two seconds is the national standard of concealed carry for a concealed carrier. So here we go. If we go, hey, wait a minute, I wanna get two seconds to get the gun out on target and get my first shot to break. That's a good standard now that I've done a couple at slow speed. One Chicago, two Chicago. There we go, that was right what I wanted. Not too fast, not too worried. Let's go from here. I was a little bit before it there, but that's okay. Notice I wasn't going fast, trying to do everything correctly. Yeah, that was exactly what I wanted. So again, I was kind of hanging out there a little bit at the end. Let's see if I can slow down in the middle so that I get a feel for it. One Chicago, two Chicago. Yeah, that's what I wanted. I think that was a good speed. Now I'll move down, because I can. We'll go to one, one five. One five is the professional standard of concealed carry. So if you're a professional concealed carrier, uh, you know, you're, you're somebody who does this for a living, um, you are uh, at, at a high standard. High standard is 1.5 seconds. And I know there's Instagram guys down in the 0.7s or whatever, 0.6s even. And those pe people are few and far between, just takes a high level of myelination. You can get there too. I'm not there, honestly. I'm about a 1-1-1-2 guy right now. That's my typical 1-1-1-2. But let's, let's figure out 1.5 and just see how that feels. Just get a good feel for what 1.5 feels like. right there. I wasn't hurrying. I wasn't going fast. And I got right that break at 1.5. Yep. Felt really good at that. Okay. We see a couple of those. Now we're going to go down again. And I'm going to hit a 1-2 here. Can I hit a 1-2 on camera for you? I don't know. We'll see. So I think so. I was doing this earlier today as my part of my refresher and I think I'm okay. Let's see how we're doing. We're going to go from down here first. Again, I don't want to do a tactical turtle. We just want to go from here and see if we can get a good shot. Saw my dot, saw it exactly where I needed it to be, gun came out, presented well. I'll have to look at the video and see if I turtled up any, I hope not. Now, I'm gonna say that my sight is the very top here when I got it. So, that wasn't the best rep. I don't know that I would've hit an alpha on that one. I might've hit a Charlie a little high. 
but I could call that miss and recognize it, and I think I was just the tiniest bit ahead of the beat. We shall see. So move down from you know that that higher level, if that might be three seconds to you, down to maybe one you know 1.5 if you can, 2.0 if you can. And if you're faster than that, move down to your normal speed. Get a few. Now this is what we've done. We have shot, we've just gone and gotten our trigger control and our grip all well and good. We've gotten a faster trigger press by using that compressed surprise break. And now we've worked our draw to first shot. And those are the skills that will refresh your skills. Now, of course, I'm gonna recommend that you then go to the range, verify all those same skills in live fire if you possibly can. But if you haven't run your gun in a little while, this little thing, we took 10 shots in our benchmark, we took five shots in our compressed surprise break, we probably ran about 15 to 20 shots total in our draw to first shot work and in that it's taken us maybe 10 minutes total to do we've refreshed ourselves and we're ready to get back in the concealed carry game so thanks again to mantis for sponsoring these videos for making me better as a shooter by making me dry fire every day hope it helps you guys and you have a great week god bless